So this is FRQ number 11. This is a kinetics question. Uh, it's mostly math based. And I want to go through with you how to attack these charts. So this is a very common start to the question of kinetics. Uh, you're going to see these for sure. Uh, and the basis is you're given a set of experimental data where you look at the initial rate of one of the chemicals and then you vary the concentration of the different reactants until you can figure out how they affect the rate. Okay. So one of the key ideas behind all of this is that every single one of these is going to start off where your rate law says rate is equal to a constant times the concentration of each reactant raised to some exponent. Typically that's going to be 0, 1, or 2. Hopefully it's not too confusing. For this, I'm going to assume that the exponent for now, that's probably going to be 0, 1, or 2. For x2, that exponent is x. And I'm going to find what that is. And then y2 is y. And I'm also going to find what that is. So then, so then the way to do that, okay, there are a couple ways. One is that some people can just look at these charts and they can see by how the different things change and don't change what those values will be, especially because they're usually limited to those three options. Uh, but in the event that you have a more difficult chart, there is a way mathematically to do this. And the assumption is, is that you take this rate law and you take the parts of it that are kept constant over time. Okay. And you compare two rate laws for two different experiments. Okay, so I'm going to show you that twice. Once with y2 and then once with x2. So for y2 it says determine the exponent for y, the order. So what you want to do is you want to find two experiments where the x does not change. That's ideal. Okay. So in that case, what I would do is I would then plug in experiments 2 and experiments 1. So for experiment 2, I'm going to plug in this function, everything that I know. Okay, so my rate for experiment 2 I know is 0.02. My constant k I don't know. My x2 concentration is this 1.2 times 10 to the negative third. That's raised to the power of x. And then the y is this 9.6 times 10 to the minus 4. To y. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing again, but this time I'm going to do this with the experiment 1 underneath. So in experiment 1, my rate is also 0.02. Rate constant k. And then this is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3rd. And this is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4. Now the idea then is what you can do is you can compare those two equations by dividing them by each other. So since this is equal to this and this is equal to that, if I divide this by this and divide this by that, then the, then the division products of those should still be equal to each other. So I'm going to divide this whole thing. And when I do, what will happen is this will cancel to become 1. The constants are the same, they'll cancel. This is the same, even though I don't know what x is, I know that 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3rd to the x divided by 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3rd to the x will cancel. Which leaves me with this. And this is going to simplify down to 4 to the y. Okay. So 4 to the y power is equal to 1. That tells us that y must be 0. Now, if you're someone who can do that in your head, you can look at this chart and, and infer that information. What you would want to do then is you would want to say for your justification, when I compare experiments 1 and 2, I see that y quadruples, x is constant, and the rate doesn't change. And then this last line would be a good summary of that. 4 is your change in your concentration, raised to some power, gives you a change in rate that doesn't change, a change of 1. So, so in that event, your exponent must be 0. Okay. So the answer to a would be 0 ordered. Then I can go through an experiment find the order for 8x2. Okay. Um, for that, I'm going to do the same thing again, but now I have some information. So now I know that this, this power here is 0, and that's going to simplify this down actually a lot. So for this, we can take any two sets. Uh, let's take 2 and 3. So in experiment 3, I would have a rate of 0.1 equals k times this 0.92 times 10 to the minus third to the x. And then, oh, sorry, putting down the wrong value there. 6 times 10 to the minus negative third. So, really, the y at this point doesn't matter. Anything I put in here is going to be raised to the zero power. Um, so, that's really going to simplify down to 1. Okay. 
Um, and then same thing for experiment two. I'm going to plug in 0.02 equals k times this 1.2 times 10 to the minus third raised to the x. Okay. So again, I'm going to divide these two. 0.1 divided by 0.02 is 5. k is cancel. And then 6 divided by 1.2 is going to be 5. So in this case, I have 5 raised to the x power is equal to 5. x must be 1. So after doing that, what I found is that I found that the y2 has no effect on your rate. Okay, changing the concentration, that does not affect your rate. And then the x2 does affect the rate, and it affects it uh, in a linear sense. So if I double x2, my rate will double. If I triple it, it will triple. Okay. So now it says, go ahead and write down what the rate lies. Now we would just literally plug in our exponents. So x2 to the 1. You could stop there. You also don't need that 1, right? Because without it, it's still to the first power. Uh, if you wanted to write in the y2, you would write in a 0 power. Okay, that would be your right one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to solve for what k is. So to solve for k, we're now going to plug in values from the experiment. Now that we know these exponents, so we can actually figure out what this number is. So if we do experiment 1, we've got 0.02. The units on that, I believe, are molarity per second. They are. It's equal to k. And then x2 is this 1.2 times 10 to the minus third. Let's get rid of these brackets and actually put the units in here. Molar. Uh, that's to the first power. And then the y, y is going to be to the zero power, so we don't need to write that in. So my k be equal to this 0.02 divided by this, that comes out to 16.7, and the units are seconds to the minus 1. The units of your rate constant will vary depending on your order. So in this case, uh, I have a molarity on the left and the right, and so those cancel, leaving me with just the seconds. Um, but if I had had a second order, I would have needed a molarity to the minus 1. Or if I had had a third order, it would have needed to be molarity to the minus 2. So the rate constant, uh, this is a common question, how the units come out on this, and it depends on how many molarities you have uh, in terms of your overall order of your reaction. That will change how many molarities you need in the K to cancel out to leave you with just the one for the rate. Okay, so that's the rate law, that's our rate constant, and that's its units. Then in part C, it gives you a graph. So I'm going to flip over here for a second. So in part C it says, what would, what would you label with your graph if you're given this? Okay. And that's mostly getting at the mathematics behind this. So if you look at the calculus behind this, and you integrate these equations, you can come up with an actual expression of concentration versus time. And there's a way to get concentration versus time that'll give you a linear result. So for first order like this, um, that would be this. You would take natural log of your concentration of x2, plot that versus time. Uh, if you plot natural log of your concentration versus time for a first order reaction, you'll get a, you'll get a negative slope line uh, as long as you're plotting a reactant. Um, and then the slope of that will be k. Okay. If there were a second order, you would have plotted 1 over concentration. If there was 0 order, it would have just been concentration versus time. Okay. And then the very last part is just a quick follow-up question. Um, and it says, what would the initial rate be for the disappearance of x2 in experiment 3? Right. And that's, a, that's actually kind of a trick question for a lot of people, um, and it shouldn't be. This gets back into stoichiometry a little bit. So if we actually look at our reaction, it was x2 plus y2 becomes 2xy. So in terms of stoichiometry, one of these and one of those makes two of those. So when you're tracking your rate as, as this, that means that that's appearing twice as fast as these would disappear. So when it says, what would the rate be for experiment 3, for this it's point 0.1, for either of these it's going to be half of that value. So the final answer for C part 2 is 0 0.05 molarity per second. Okay. And the rationale of that is purely a stoichiometry one. That's actually a simpler problem than most people take it for. Most people start trying to plug into some equation. Really that's just saying, this has to appear twice as fast as these disappear. So I think it was x2 was the one they asked about. Now, you can put a negative sign on that. And if you don't want to put a negative sign, it would be smart to put that at least something about that you know that that amount is decreasing. So say that that's the rate of disappearance, or the rate that that's being used up. 
um, to clarify that. So that was number 11. It was a kinetics question. Um, if you'd like to look at more, there are a whole bunch. If you scroll down to the description, I have a link to a website that will link you to the individual problems. And it will link you to a whole bunch of other questions and solutions. So thanks.